Awesome, guys. We are back. It is our last week in Colossians. Um, I'm super excited that we've journeyed through this book and, and gotten to see uh, Paul's uh, passion and Paul's enthusiasm and uh, his love for a local church and his uh, all that stuff that just really flows through his writing. Uh, I hope you were able to hear that if you followed along with us over the last few weeks. Um, this is it. This is it. And then uh, we're not going to read the last uh, few verses of Colossians. It's really just a kind of a farewell uh, to his brothers and sisters in Colossae. And he, he tells them like, you know, uh, so-and-so says hi, so-and-so, keep them in your prayers. I'm sending so-and-so to you and those kinds of things. So it's more of a farewell um, not a whole lot there that we need to uh, really address publicly like this. It's something you can look at. It, it's something that you can see uh, uh, in Paul's character. Uh, but for this study, it's, it's, uh, we're going to let you read it and just see how he uh, says goodbye to his friends. It's really kind of a cool, neat experience to see how he says goodbye, but we're not going to cover that today. Today, we are going to be in chapter 4 of Colossians. Uh, verse 2 through 7, I believe, and we are going to knock these things out. This is a really, actually very fitting, very, very fitting section of Scripture to read today amongst all the chaos, right? We just came out of this COVID season where everything was kind of flipped upside down and everybody was in a weird limbo of, of what they were to do. And then we just kind of jumped right into this other chaos um, that we are going to address today in this video um, with the death of George Floyd and um, all of the circumstances surrounding that. And so we really, um, God could have only worked this out for this section of verses to land today, which is what he does. He really sets things up and makes things uh, happen and so... Uh, miraculous ways, I think. So before we do that, let's pray. And then we're going to jump into Colossians chapter four. Hey, by the way, those who hung out with us today, uh, it is Wednesday when I'm recording this. We were just hanging out a few hours this morning. Uh, man, I had a blast. Thanks for coming. Uh, I enjoyed playing volleyball. I enjoyed coming and eating pizza with you guys and going and cleaning the field by the church. I, I think that was such a fun time. We got to meet a new student uh, today. Her name was Dara. Uh, if you're watching this, man, thanks for coming and joining us. We had a we had a blast. So um, to get us started, I'm going to pray. Uh, and if you missed out on this week, we will be back here next week in the morning on Wednesday, just hanging out, uh, playing games, and maybe eating some snacks or some more pizza. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you so much for all the blessings that you've given us as as people in this country and as people who love and follow you, Lord, you've blessed us so much uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, uh, in so many different ways. Lord, and we thank you for that. And we thank you that uh, we have the ability to share our faith and preach our faith freely uh, without threat of harm, without um, severe persecutions lord we man we are so grateful for that but we know there's a day coming and so lord until that day comes to where we are persecuted uh to the point of death lord i pray that we would prepare ourselves that we would be in your word and that we would be preparing ourselves so lord today help us prepare a little bit for that day because it's coming and we know it is and for our lives today lord prepare us how we can love graciously. Lord, your word teaches us to love graciously, to listen carefully, and to be there for those who have had injustice against them. Uh, Lord, we pray that today this study uh, helps open our eyes a little bit to how we can react in this crazy time. Lord, we love you. Lord, we thank you for your mercies and your grace on our lives. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's get started. Um, we are going to be in chapter 4 of Colossians, if you missed the first few times I said that. Um, chapter 4, Colossians, and if I can ever find it, there it is. Okay, 
small writing in this little Bible. We're just going to read it, and then we're going to cover it. I think you're going to see right off the bat why it covers so well in this uh, season that we're in. Uh, all right, let me, let, let me actually do this. We're going um, to tell you a little bit of where we left off in case you haven't seen the previous video. Uh, we just got done talking about how to live as a family, right? In light of, in light of all that we just learned about Jesus uh, in Colossians, right? He's telling, Paul wrote this because he just wanted to remind the Colossian church that, hey, everything you do is for Jesus, about Jesus, to bring Jesus glory, uh, everything's for him and because of him, right? And so he's saying like, hey guys, do not add to this because that was their struggle. They, they loved Jesus and they were following Jesus, but they were adding in all these other things because they thought all these other things would help them to salvation. And Paul's reminding them, no, 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 no. You only need Jesus. He's all you need and he's the greatest thing you need ever, okay? So he lands here and he, he is hammered down on them for three times three uh, chapters saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's all about him. Follow him. Uh, don't add to him. That's all you need. Uh, pray to him. Pray, pray, pray. Uh, love like him. Act like him. Like he was pounding Jesus on them during these first three chapters. And then he ends. So uh, I always think People end their sentences, they end their stories, they end uh, their letters with some of the most important things they want you to know, right? It's like, I want, if, if you're going to hear anything, which is probably going to be the last thing you hear, I want it to be the most important. Now, it's not the most important because Jesus is the most important, but it's how we, uh, it's the second most important, I think, because he's saying, because you love Jesus and because Jesus changed your life, and because of Jesus, and this is how you act as your family, then this, right? And so he really uh, gives them this kind of um, last thing. Uh, remember this in light of what I just taught you. Remember this, remember this, remember this. Okay? So that's kind of where we're at. And now we're going to read it. Okay? He ends with this. Very, very important. Devote yourselves to prayer. Stay alert in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door to us for the message to speak the mystery of the Messiah for which I am in prison, so that I may reveal it as I am required to speak. Act wisely toward outsiders, making the most of your time. Your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Okay, did you catch why it's so important in this season, in this time that we're in right now? Yeah, it's that last verse that we just read. Your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Okay, we're going to get to that, but that's the key. He starts this little section off by saying, devote yourself to prayer, right? He just got done saying, this is how you live as a family. Uh, kids, this is how you're to listen to your parents. Parents, this is how you should treat your kids. Spouses, this is how you should treat your spouse. Uh, slaves, this is how you should see your master. Masters, this is how you should treat your slaves. And he really kind of breaks down how families are to interact in light of loving and following Jesus, right? And so he does that, and then he jumps right into saying this. Devote yourself to prayer. Why does he do that? And it's immediate. Like, the verse before that uh, is verse 1, which is really kind of the ending of um, chapter 3. He just got done saying, Master, supply your slaves with what is right and fair, since you know that you too have a master in heaven. Right? He just got done telling them how to take care of their slaves, because that's how... Uh, our master in heaven takes care of us. And then immediately he says, devote yourself to prayer and stay alert in it with thanksgiving. He's saying, look, you can act this way. You can, you can do everything you possibly can to live right as a family, to live right as Christians. But if you're not devoted in prayer, this is why I think this is like the next step. 
that he says right after he gets done talking about how family should interact. If you don't devote yourself to prayer, if you are not constantly thankful for the family and for the things and for uh, the blessings that you have, things will fall apart. They, I mean, you, it's just you can't keep uh, not being thankful to God and in relationship with God and then expect God to be right there by your side all the time. Right? It's a two-way relationship. Right? He did all the saving. He showed all the grace. But there's a part of our relationship that he uh, wants to receive back. Right? He wants us to love him and seek him. And that happens in prayer. That is shown by thanksgiving to him. And he's saying, remember that and devote yourself to that. <clears throat> and at the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door for us to speak the message. Right? So we... Pray that we are uh, we, we're constantly in this thankfulness prayer as we are also praying that the gospel would be shared. That Jesus, this message that he just got done preaching to the Colossians pretty much and saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He said, I, that's the message that I just got put in chains for. As you're praying and as you're being thankful for what God's doing in your life, pray for me that he may open a new door that I may continue to spread this message. Regardless of what it does to me, let me have an open door. So pray for me that I would have an open door. Um, <clears throat> so that I may reveal it as I am required to speak. Verse 5 says, Act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of time. Right? He's saying, act wisely. Why? Because you only get a certain amount of time with people, especially outsiders. He said, especially outsiders, those who don't know Jesus, you only get a certain amount of time with. And he's saying, use that time wisely because you only get a little bit of it. And God may only use you for that little bit of time. And if your whole time with that person is about 900 other things except Jesus, You've wasted your time. You've wasted your time with that person that you could have shared the hope that Jesus has given you. And that's sad. We don't want to be in that position because Paul never found himself in that position. He was always telling people about Jesus, which is why it landed him in prison. It made people mad that he was equating who Jesus was and what Jesus did with who God is and what God does. Because in reality, they are equal. They are the same. And that was making the religious leaders terribly mad. So much so that they had them thrown in prison. And we can't be scared because we're not going to be thrown in prison. The worst thing that can happen, people laugh at us. People call us names. People stop being friends with us. Those things kind of stink. But it's not prison. It's not beatings. It's not death. Maybe one day we'll get there. Maybe, but if we're not prepared now, then that one day, we're going to be scared then too. And then when you have somebody threatening you, do you love Jesus or not? Do you claim who Jesus is as God or not? What are you going to say? When it's easy, we should be able to, um, we should be able to say whatever. Yeah, we love Jesus, but we don't. So what's going to happen when it gets difficult? Right? What happens when things get way too difficult for us to say, yeah, we love Jesus? Okay, so he's saying, pray for me that I may be able to speak like I need to speak. Then act wisely towards outsiders, making the most of the time that you have. Your speech, right? So making the most of the time with outsiders. But then he goes right into this key point that I think is Jesus is pointing right at us today. He is pointing right at us today to say this. Your speech should always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you should answer each person. Guys, we have had, you've seen it all over social media, right? You've seen it uh, in every post. You've seen it all over the news. People are shouting hate at each other from all directions. 
It's coming from every direction that's out there right now. Hate from this side, hate from that side. It's in, it hates coming from every religion, hates coming from every uh, race, hates coming from every um, doctrine, hates coming from every uh, ethnicity, you name it. You name the different categories, somebody's shouting hate from every single one of those. Yet, there's some good coming from every single one of those as well. And so where do we find ourselves? Because Paul was telling the Colossians, look, your speech should be seasoned with salt. It should, be, it should taste and be nice. It should be, the nice is kind of a lame word. It should be kind and compassionate and gracious, right? Uh, that's one of the words he says, your speech should be gracious. Guys, that's huge. Right? Because sure, they may deserve um, for you to yell at them because they're doing something stupid. Right? They may deserve that. But grace is giving someone what they don't deserve. So instead of yelling, you're stupid, uh, you just hate people, uh, you're a jerk, ah, we could be gracious in our speech and say, look, I get your point. I see where you're coming from, but here's my side. Here's what I believe. Here's why I believe it. Let's have a conversation that doesn't involve screaming and fighting and hate and anger, right? Because, sure, it may be normal for the world to scream and shout in anger when they're mad. But as Christians, when we have something that is bothering us, something that we disagree with, something that we don't feel is right, our screaming hate and anger is showing them exactly that we are exactly like them. That's what it's showing them. It's saying, look, we're no different than the world. We're going to shout and scream and spout anger at you because we have the right to, right? We have, it's a free country. I can yell at you and I can be hateful to you if I want to. Well, that's true to the world, but not to our world, not to our world with Christ, not to our uh, king the kingdom that we live in is different. And that's what Paul's getting at. Your speech should be gracious. So when you disagree politically, uh, socially, whatever things you disagree with, you screaming hate and anger at somebody, man, that's not cutting it. That's not showing Jesus. Because the whole point of Colossians was to show them Jesus so that they would go and show others Jesus and remember that Jesus is the main point. And when we go out and when we scream and we shout hate at people or we badmouth them on social media or we tear them down on social media, then guess what? We're no different than the world. We're no different than anybody else shouting hate at us. We, we can sit back as Christians and say, oh, we're being persecuted. They hate us. Well, sure. They hate God. They don't hate us. They hate God. The Bible tells us that. They hated me before they hate you. They hate you because they hate me. Right? That's kind of what he's telling us. And we can sit back and say, okay, yeah, sure, they yell and hate us, but we don't have to return that. And when we do, we're saying that we're no better. We, we have no change in our hearts. Jesus didn't change us at all if we're spouting hate and anger and slinging words and comments and memes on Facebook that say that you're a jerk because of this, this, and this, or you're just an idiot because of this, this, and this, or because you're this political party, you're not worth my time, or you're stupid, or you whatever, right? All that is saying, I'm ignorant that Jesus said to love one another through our speech. How we talk to others shows them that we love them. Paul tells us again right here in Colossians, your speech should be gracious. Is your speech gracious today? That's my challenge. When you hear of an opposing view, when you hear of somebody chanting something that goes against what you believe, do you yell back at them with obscenities? Do you yell back at them um, with attitude and telling them they're stupid or with name calling? Or do you hear their view and then you graciously give your view? Or you graciously offer them Jesus? I don't see a lot of that happening. I see a little bit, 
but the most things I see on Facebook from believers, from God-fearing Christians who are right here in my own church, I see people spilling hate towards each other. When somebody disagrees or when somebody's from a different political party, it's hate, 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 hate. Oh, yeah, I know Jesus said not to, but this is different. No, 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 it's not different. Jesus said always. They will know you by your love. Have we loved them? Have we shown them that we hear them? Have we shown them that we care about them? Or when we hear something opposing, do we just throw them under the bus? Do we just yell at them or uh, digitally bash them? I don't know. Where do you find yourself today? And if you find yourself bashing and spewing hate or even anger in their direction, remember what Paul said. Your, see- your speech should be seasoned with salt. It should be so gracious. Yes, they. in your heart you may feel they deserve it. They deserve this ugly meme about them. But grace says, I'm going to give them what they don't deserve. I'm going to give them, in your heart, if you don't believe they deserve a chance, then you give them a chance. If you believe they don't deserve a nice word, you give them a nice word because that's what grace does. You didn't deserve life. You didn't deserve Uh, redemption. You didn't deserve Jesus' death on the cross. You didn't deserve saving grace, and yet it was given freely to you and to me. So today we got to ask ourselves, if God gave us that much grace, can't we afford to give the same amount of grace or some kind of grace to those who are on the other side of our opinions, of our political views, of our ethnicities, of, uh, of our um, whatever it might be. If they're on the other side of whatever fence or line is drawn, can't we show them the grace that Jesus showed us 2,000 years ago? Because he laid down his life for you. I don't know if you know that or not, but Jesus died and there was a huge line drawn in the sand. Matter of fact, there was a great cavern in between you and Jesus or between you and God, and Jesus laid down his life to stretch out over that cavern so that you would have a relationship with God. He died in the greatest act of grace ever. And if he did that for us, surely we can show some small amount of grace to those on the opposite side of a political view or on the opposite side of a social stance. Guys, as you deal with all of this stuff that's going around these next few days as all the protests come and and as all these different things happen are you going to find yourself yelling and screaming in hate or are you going to find yourself giving them the gracious speech that they don't deserve where are you going to find yourself are you going to love or are you going to hate that's the question you have to answer for yourself for me I'm going to choose to love them if they interact with me I'm going to hear them out I'm going to talk with them, and I'm going to show them as much love and grace as I possibly have the ability to do in my own capacity. And I'm going to pray. Like Paul said, I'm going to pray like crazy and sit in that thanksgiving of prayer, thanking God for all that he's given us, all that he's done for us, so that I might, too, be able to show that kind of grace. Guys, um, I'm going to leave you there. Because I feel like I'm just rambling on the same thing. So I love you guys. I thank you for watching. Uh, If you know somebody that needs to hear this message today, share it with them. Um, Hopefully they'll watch. Hopefully they'll hear something. Uh, And hopefully it's God speaking through me. Hopefully these aren't my own words. Hopefully uh, this isn't just one big Aaron's opinion time. But hopefully these are the words that, that God wants us to hear. They're in the good book. They're in the Bible. And Paul was a faithful minister of it. And so I trust his words. I trust the words that are here. And I trust that God is speaking to us today. Season your speech with grace because it needs it. There needs to be a lot more grace and a lot less hate. Guys, we love you and I'll see you next time.